Hey everyone, this is Ken Flerledge. Uh, I'm a Tableau Zen master and I'm here with Andy Cockrey, who is the evangelist at, at Tableau. And Andy had this interesting challenge with uh, uh, visualizing his Strava activity data. And so we, he ran into a bit of problems and I jumped in and helped him out. And so I'm gonna hand it over to Andy and Andy's gonna kind of run through what he did and, and, and the uh, obstacles he ran into. All right, thanks Ken. Uh, great to be here with everybody. So I'm going to share my screen and tell you a little bit of a story about my path to making some art with some Strava data. Then I'm going to hand it back to Ken and ask him how he saved me from despair. So this is how to make some art with your Strava data. And if this is something that inspires you, I would love to see the kind of thing you can make too. So it all started January 2019, 15 months ago, when Andy Kriebel posted this on Instagram. It's a beautiful small multiple of his Strava activity. Look at that. Straight away, I was like, I want to build that in Tableau too. Looking at his Instagram post, it, soon, it was very obvious he used R and uh, some code he downloaded from GitHub. I don't know R. Now I could go and learn it or I could endeavor to do the whole thing in Tableau, which must be possible because we have a web data connector. So with the web data connector, pulling your Strava data down. Am I, is Andy Cotgreave capable of building a matrix of all his Strava activities? That was the big question. I thought yes. So I did it, and I'll show you how it worked, and then we'll see the end result. Uh, I'm just gonna start with four activities that are local to my village. Um, I mean, I've been very lucky in my job to go running and walking around the world, but I'm just gonna show the principle of the challenge here. If you take a map like that, what we're trying to do is create a trellis in which all the routes are scaled so that they fit within one part, one cell of the matrix. Now, with these four routes, you can see one is squished over on the right-hand side, one is on the left-hand side, another is kind of big, but it's in the bottom right, and this fourth one is small and in the top right. And what we need to do is take each one of those and scale them out. How hard could the math be? Ken knows, because he's been down this path as well. Now, you could do this uh, using Andy Kriebel's solution or the solution that he used, and you end up with this, basically taking each mark and working out the percentage of where it is between the height and the width of the route itself. Looks cool, but you can see the problem. Check out the orange route, the very east-west route and the Kriebel solution squishes it or pulls, stretches it uh, to fill the space. So I didn't want to do that because that didn't seem honest to me. I wanted to maintain the aspect ratio. 11 months later, after several attempts to fix it, I still hadn't solved the problem. It was coming up to January 25th, 2019, which is my dad's 75th birthday. Now he's a very, very keen cyclist, has got hundreds of activities on Strava, and I'm like, I can be a great son and give him a great present of a framed picture of all the activi his activities on Strava, which meant I had to knuckle down and solve this problem. And it, it was at this point that the pen and paper came out. This was great fun. I cracked it. On a long train journey, I cracked the equation. And here it was. I've done it. I've built a matrix. Awesome. Which enabled me to print this, which is what I gave to my dad. Framed on A3, uh, all his Strava activities, Brilliant. He loved it. Everybody in the family loved it. I'm a winning son. Uh, it was awesome, right? I, I, was, I was delighted. I've solved this. So that was a great, a great moment. Made my dad happy. I'd achieved this goal to make this thing all in Tableau. Hurrah. Now, having made it, it's time to write a blog post about it, which we've got a link to in the bottom of this video. Um, and I was literally putting these slides together to describe the concept of how to do the math to make the aspect ratio correct with all the Strava activities when I got to this slide and realized I could see a problem. If you look at this rectangle or the rectangle bounding this blue square, it's, no, if you look at the rectangle bounding this blue root, you can see it's a square. When you look at the bounding rectangle for the blue root in my Strava solution, you can see it's not a square. Something had gone wrong. Something had gone very wrong. And 
At which point, my endeavour to solve this without calling in the experts came to an end. And it was time to call in the master of maths. It was Ken. Because Ken and I, or Ken has done, well, I haven't. Ken has done some incredible mathematical wizardry with Tableau in the past couple of years. And I was like, dear Ken, can you save, <laughs> can you save me? At which point, Ken, really, this video is now about you because uh, I sent you the workbook, asked if you could solve the problem, and off you went. You went down a path, right? So, right. okay, we can see your screen, Ken. Tell us how you saved me. All right, how do we get rid of this share thing? All right, so, um, here, so here's a quick map of, of, of Andy's uh, Strata activities here. And obviously, he lives in the UK, so there's a lot of activities here in the in that area. So um, let me move us over here. Um, so you can see this effect of what's going on here um, with these activities. You get this sort of squishing. So this is a good example. Oh, there's, there's a good example. Oh, it keeps clicking off of it, my bad. Um, so we can see it's sort of widening these, the, the, the map a little bit. So the one up on the top on the right is an actual map. The one on the bottom is that sort of normalized, uh, uh, plotted uh, solution that Andy came up with. So what I what I realized as I was looking around on this is that the first, the closest I, closer I got to the equator, the more these sort of started to look almost exactly perfect. And then as we started to get away from the equator, they kind of started to squish again. Um, and so all the, the map experts out there, you're all screaming at your screen right now because you know exactly what's going on. I'm not a map expert, so it took me a little bit longer to figure this out. But um, let me switch over to Google Earth and we can kind of explain what's going on here. So we can see our Earth here and we can see our lines of latitude, which are the, the, the lines that run um, east and west. Um, and you notice that those are parallel. They're always parallel no matter where you are on the globe, right? Um, and it, as it turns out, the distance between a degree of latitude is about 69 miles, pretty much no matter where you are on the Earth. Um, the Earth is not quite a perfect sphere, so it varies just a little bit, but not enough to really impact us here. Um, the lines of longitude are a little bit different, though. Um, these are the ones that run north and south, so you can see here that um, they, as you go further north, they all sort of start to converge and then they meet at the North Pole, same with the South Pole. So what's happening here? Well, our, our, the solution that we came up with, what Andy came up with, was, was taking these coordinates, the latitude and longitude coordinates, and using it to sort of flatten it down onto a, you know, a, a regular X and Y Cartesian plane, right? But the problem is the distance between longitude lines and latitude lines aren't always the same, right? So as I said, a distance between a degree of latitude is pretty much always 69 degrees. Um, a different, different, the distance between a degree of longitude is about 69 degrees at the equator, but it gets smaller and smaller and smaller the farther north you go up. So you can see it's significantly smaller up here in the UK, right? So um, what, we, what my solution was is that instead of taking those those latitude and longitude coordinates and flattening them out, is we needed to figure out the difference in terms of actual distance. Um, so that's uh, where a little bit of math comes in. Now, I didn't figure out the math, I just kind of looked up the formula, and fortunately, <laughs> there's a simple formula that uses a little bit of trig that allows you to figure out the distance um, of a degree of longitude. And so it depends on the degree of latitude, where you are north-south, um, but it's basically some basic trig. You take the cosine of the latitude, you multiply by the, uh, the distance um, between the degree at the equator of longitude, and you get the, 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 the number of miles between a degree of longitude. And then now we have the distance, you know, our, our width in, in actual miles and our, our height in actual miles, and then we're able to apply that basic formula to our uh, calculations and if we go back up north uh, where's that one I was looking at before well there's there a complicated one. <laughs> yeah there we go there it is so we can see here now that we have the exact same shape exactly as we planned of course it's right on the uh, equator of course 
but we also get the exact uh, shape here down on um, down south as well. And pretty much anywhere we go, we can see the exact same shape. And so it's really just a matter of figuring out the miles between our leftmost and rightmost point and our topmost and bottom point, and then using that to normalize it and flatten it. And there's a solution. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, I love how you say it's just a matter of da di da di da and basically <laughs> working out longitude, latitude, distance where you are on the earth because yeah, you're right. It is just a case of that, but uh, it eluded me. And maybe <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I think when I sent you the workbook, I was like, it might be, it might be, but at which point it'd take me all I could do to get to my solution. And I was just, I, my brain couldn't get any further. So uh, yeah, that's amazing. And, and it only took you, it didn't even take <clears throat> you that long to do it, did it? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, he says. Ah, that's just shocking. Yeah, so um, you've done a bunch of other stuff, maths stuff, Ken. I mean, you kind of just see Tableau as, I mean, do you have a background in maths? Um, I, I, I minored in math in college. I, I mean, I was always, I was always good at math. Um, so, it, yeah, it always came sort of naturally for me, I guess. Nice. Um, I yeah. mean, the, the, the funny thing is, and, I, and I've told a lot of people this, is that, um, you know, I haven't used trigonometry since 10th grade in high school. Um, honestly, truly have not used it, you know, and I always, uh, you know, they always used to always tell us that you would use it. And I, you know, I never did yeah. and until I found, until I found uh, Tableau and, and I realized, oh, wow, I can do some amazing stuff with, with trigonometry and, and, uh, you know, just refresh my knowledge of it. And, and yeah ran with it yep that's amazing it's absolutely amazing so um yeah just to recap that solution you can see how what's on screen is, is is my bodged solutions and ken's solutions overlaid on top of each other you can see how uh they fix themselves because of that magic bit of transformations so then once you've done that you build a trellis and you end up with something like this uh at which point you're like wow that's really cool if you're into Strava data and this kind of thing, uh, which means that uh, well, what I've loved about this project, Ken, is it's one of those things where uh, the community comes to the fore, people are helping each other out, and you know whatever whatever your own skills, you, you can achieve great things. Even I mean, you know, using other people's calculations. Just to recap, this first one, that's what uh, using the solution Andy Creeble used would have looked like. Um, and this is really gorgeous, right? It just doesn't maintain the, it doesn't even try to maintain the aspect ratio. It stretches it. Uh, this was mine in the middle. I was trying to maintain the aspect ratio and failed. So I actually didn't, you know, I was consciously trying to just avoid a problem and just created a new one. My dad was quite happy with it. Don't anybody tell him <laughs> that it's the wrong version. <laughs> Nobody tell him. It's all right. He knows. Um, and then Ken Fleurledge, who's good at maths. Uh, which is a plural word, um, you know, that's Ken's solution. Uh, it's It's been a great exercise, this, and it's one of these things where you can just go to town. Once you've got data like this, uh, you can make all sorts of pretty pictures. Uh, in fact, I think one of, look there, I've got one of them printed out. To, I've, I'm in a brand new office. I've got a whole wall to put pictures on, so I've printed one of those job ones out. Um, and you've done a bunch of other arty things as well, Ken. What's, your, what's the favorite one you've done? Oh boy, um, I, I think probably the, the loom art thing was my favorite, uh, where we yeah. basically recreated pictures. It was inspired by something I saw that Chris uh, DiMartini had created, and um, basically just creating pictures from drawing straight lines. Um, so that was that was a fun one. Yeah, that was absolutely astonishing. Uh, loom art. We'll put a link to that in the bottom of this video and in the blog that's linking. So thank you. Right. Well, that's it. It was just a short video. We wanted to, this was, this was a fun exercise. I'm very grateful to Ken for helping out. Um, so Ken, thanks for helping me and stopping me going mad. Uh, thank you. I, I love a challenge, Andy. You know that. So thank you. Well, I, <laughs> I kind of know you like a challenge and I do <laughs> admit that I thought, I bet if I just throw Ken the bait, <laughs> like, of all the people who might take it, because uh, I'm developing it, we're developing a history there. So uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you for all of that. And uh, if this has inspired you, check out the links to work out how you can do this yourself in Tableau. 
we would love to see what kind of art you can make with your Strava data. All right, with that, take care and uh, see you All soon. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.